Welcome to Ancient Aliens, the show that explores the possibility of extraterrestrial visitation in human history with a combination of expert interviews. How can angels have sex? Dramatic reenactments and fascinating historical evidence. God coming down from the sky, actually a UFO descending. We delve into the mysteries of the past to uncover the truth about ancient aliens. Ancient Aliens gets a lot of flack, perhaps for being factually incorrect, or suggesting that every natural disaster was caused by aliens. The Great Flood was created by extraterrestrials on purpose. And no one is safe. Everything from the pyramids of Giza to some rocks in Florida were created by aliens or by using alien technology. Utilized anti-gravity to levitate and distribute the enormous rocks used to build Coral Castle. And every one from Leonardo da Vinci to Moses from from religion, to the founding fathers of the United States had contact with and were influenced by aliens. Is it really possible that Leonardo da Vinci may have obtained his incredible creative and scientific knowledge as the direct result of an extraterrestrial encounter. Every one from the Greek gods to Adam and Eve were alien hybrids themselves. Yes, that's right. Alien hybrids. Adam was created from a human-like race that already existed on Earth. They even suggest that when we landed on the moon, that the astronauts may have had another, more top secret assignment to contact aliens. Ancient Aliens has been on the air from 2009 to... It's still going? How have they not run out of shit to talk about? They're on season 18. And so I counted, they've done over 18 episodes dedicated to God and or the Bible itself, not including when they mention it constantly in almost every episode, nor when they mention other religious texts like the ancient Indian Mahabharata or the Quran. They even have episodes dedicated to aliens and Bigfoot, aliens and dinosaurs, Aliens and insects, why not? You can tell that they started running out of ideas too because by season 16 they had William Shatner on an episode for some reason. And then by season 17 they were just doing top 10 lists. It premieres on History Channel under the genres of documentary and science fiction? and stars one of my favorite TV hosts, Giorgio Tsoukalos, made famous by this meme. I'm bringing you back to 2009. And he's described on the History Channel cast website as a hybrid between Carl Sagan and Indiana Jones. And he ended up getting his own TV show on the network. Can you guess what he does in that show? And to see if there are any real connections between extraterrestrials and the founding of America. So that one's just called In Search of Aliens, but I actually lied, he has three more shows. He's got Ancient Aliens, The Ultimate Evidence, Ancient Aliens, Declassified, Ancient Aliens, Giorgio Tells All. This guy's more dedicated to aliens than Tom DeLonge writing an entire song called Aliens Exist in 1999. So you might be thinking, probably not, what are this guy's qualifications? Is he a scientist, perhaps? An astronomer? Archaeologist? Uh... He graduated in sports medicine. <laughs> but his love for uncovering the truth about aliens always puts a big smile on my face because he is so, so animated. Even though the person doesn't have any powers at all. Ancient Aliens also stars author David Childress, whose IMDb page describes him as the real life Indiana Jones. Wait a minute. I thought Giorgio was the real life Indiana Jones. Are they both? Are they both Indiana Jones? Anyway, he writes books about ancient mysteries and unexplained phenomena and is known for his book series, Lost Cities. Lastly, this guy How can angels have sex? is the author of a very famous book called Chariots of the Gods, written in 1968, which ended up actually being a very controversial book because it was one of the first to suggest that the technologies and religions of many ancient civilizations were given to them by ancient astronauts that were welcomed as gods. 
Well, it ended up getting turned into a documentary of the same name in 1970. I tried to watch some, but it was honestly boring as hell. But this documentary actually ended up skyrocketing the popularity of the ancient astronaut theory that Eric is hailed as one of the forefathers of. Is this sounding more familiar? This guy was the blueprint for Ancient Aliens the show. And is one of the hosts. Sex. Oh, and I also don't know what you have to do to get your criminal charges highlighted on your Google Info panel, but, uh... I watch this show because it is wildly entertaining. I feel like I have to preface this for someone out there by saying I don't believe everything that they say on this show, and I just find it very fun to watch. Sometimes they say something just so completely out of pocket that you have to pause doing your laundry just to go, because... Whoa. So you could define ancient aliens as a conspiracy theory, defined as an explanation for an event or situation that invokes a conspiracy. You can't use the word in the definition. Come on. By sinister and powerful groups, aliens, often political in motivation, Maybe, when other explanations are more probable. And that's the thing. For a lot of the situations that they default the causation to be aliens, there is no other probable explanation. Well, the depending on who you ask. They remain to be ancient mysteries, like how the pyramids were built, the purpose of the Nazca lines, or the famous Mayan pyramids, or even how Jesus floated away on the third day of his burial. Happy Easter, y'all. This was him getting abducted into a spaceship. So for this lovely holiday season, you can enjoy this video at any time of the year though, I want to talk about some Bible stories that we all know and love. Starting with the reason for the season, the birth of Jesus Christ himself, according to ancient aliens. Who were they? Why did they come? What did they leave behind? Where did they go? Will they return? <laughs> Ancient aliens. <laughs> Once again, this is a disclaimer. Your relationship with God is none of my business. I'm treating this show as purely entertainment, not meant to be taken seriously. And also, I'm not saying whether you should or shouldn't believe these Bible stories. I just think we can all have a little laugh today. According to the Bible, it's the story that they all taught us, whether we wanted to learn it or not. Mary was selected by God to have his only son, Jesus. So, she was by the Holy Spirit, and in Bethlehem, Mary and Joseph stayed at some dude's stable because they were in town for a mandatory census, and Airbnb prices were really expensive, so they had nowhere to stay. <laughs> Mary popped out Jesus, she threw him in the manger, I mean, she gently put him down in the manger. Some days later, three wise men visited baby Jesus and gave him gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Well, according to ancient aliens, this is not the whole truth. According to ancient aliens, be strangers had sex with beautiful young girls on our planet. Therefore, Mother Mary was impregnated by the Holy Spirit, right? Wrong. The Holy Spirit, the Immaculate Conception, was an alien. An alien impregnated Mother Mary. And they believe that these extraterrestrials are some kind of gods. And so she gave birth to the half-alien, half-human hybrid known as Jesus. And this is further supported by this painting. <laughs> that has a spaceship in the background pointing a beam of light at Mary. But it's also very possible that he might have been an extraterrestrial. Who, since he was very wise, was sent here to teach us things and good values. So that's your new version of Christmas. <laughs> you might have to adjust your nativity scenes at your local church <laughs> to align with this story, but there you have it. Jesus's dad was an alien. This does imply that God was an alien. Uh, Jesus is half alien himself, of course. But weirdly, enough, this isn't the first or only time that someone was mysteriously born in ancient biblical times. Which brings us to the next story I wanted to talk about. According to some deleted scenes of the Bible, also known as the Genesis Apocrypha, also known as the Dead Sea Scrolls, Noah was born of immaculate conception as well. Suddenly, his mom Batinash was pregnant, and she was like, Lamech, I swear I didn't have sex, sex with anyone, it just happened. And Lamech went to his dad, Methuselah, and he was like, I don't know. And then Methuselah <laughs> went to his dad, Enoch, who was in heaven. I guess he just showed up as like a force ghost, like Yoda and Anakin in episode six, and Enoch was like, guys, 
you're fine. Lamech, your wife is telling the truth and your son is going to have great purpose and be the father of the new world or something like that. And they were like, okay, understandable, that's fine. And so Noah was born. None of these words are in the Bible and that's a joke that actually makes sense. So now we get to Noah's Ark. Let me tell you how Noah's Ark goes down canonically in the Bible. Once upon a time, God created Adam and Eve. The descendants of Adam and Eve became wicked and they kind of sucked. <laughs> And so God was like, I'm gonna wipe out all of humanity with a flood and just start over and start a new save file. But Noah was like super obedient to God and God liked him. So God went to Noah and was like, Noah, I got some bad news. <laughs> I'm gonna flood the earth and erase all of humanity. But don't worry, I'll give you a heads up and some instructions on how to save yourself and your family. So you're gonna make a big boat, like a big boat. And I'm gonna need you to collect two of every animal onto your boat so that way when the flood is over, you guys can chill and repopulate the earth. And Noah was like, okay, understandable. Will do, boss. So Noah did just that. He built a big boat, got two of every animal. I'm still mad at him for bringing mosquitoes onto that boat, but it's in the past nonetheless. So then he saved himself and his family and started anew. So the story of Noah's Ark is already a little far-fetched in terms of like what we think as reality today, right? Well, it gets even wilder when you insert this story into the ancient aliens machine. Here's how the story of Noah and his Ark really went down. A According to ancient aliens. Noah's mom impregnated by aliens, obviously. God in this situation was actually aliens because aliens who, by the way, created man according to this ancient astronaut theory, were actually the ones who initiated the Great Flood in order to start over with man to get rid of biological imperfections. Basically, their failed genetic manipulation attempts at creating man. The flood was actually a means of ridding the Earth of biological imperfections. And since Noah was pure in all his generations and was half alien, he had the best genes to pass on to the new world. So aliens instructed Noah on how to survive this flood by building a big boat to save him and his family. But instructing him to gather two of each animal to bring onto the boat was not realistic. I mean, the boat had to be huge. We're saying that's not realistic? Okay. So the more realistic outcome was I'll just let them explain. Could it be possible that Noah's Ark was once again misunderstood technology and Noah's Ark was a DNA bank? Yup, so Noah's Ark was a DNA bank. So that's a little taste of ancient aliens. There is so much to cover in this show. So let me know if you want more of it. I guess I'll try reading this book that I bought just for the bit. My friends are concerned about me. Anyway, subscribe. This video is sponsored by my patrons. Thank you very much. I'll see you next time. Bye.